Hello everybody, welcome to this series of tutorials about the Flight Sim Labs A320X and today we're going to be looking at landing, always a hot topic on the forums. So what are our objectives from today and in terms of landing the aircraft in general? We want to achieve consistent touchdowns and that means in the right place at the right speed and on the center line. If we grease it on, that is a bonus. The priority has to be to get us in the right place, in the touchdown zone, at the right speed and on the center line. If we can manage to, to get a nice soft landing as well, uh, then that's that's all, all, all the better. But priority is right place, right speed and on the center line. So what is the right place? Well, we should be aiming at the thousand foot, the 300 meter markers, which are those big thick uh, uh, markings, which I have uh, outlined in red. And uh, certainly we should have the wheels on the ground inside the touchdown zone. Now, of course, if we aim our, at the thousand foot point and we keep that point static in our windscreen, what is actually happening is that we're taking our eyes to that point but what we need to remember is that of course the aeroplane is very long and therefore the main uh, landing gear is actually quite a long way below and behind us which means that if we take our eyes to that point actually the main gear will touch the ground uh, and touch the runway quite a, a little bit before uh, that point at which we've uh, aimed ourselves at about 20 feet is uh, the difference between uh, where our eyes go and where the uh, where the main landing gear goes on the Airbus A320. Uh, this is why we don't aim at the threshold. If we were to aim uh, much closer to the threshold, we'd actually end up with our main landing gear going through the uh, approach lighting or you know landing short of the runway. So what is the right speed? Uh, well, about V approach minus five, to V approach minus 10. Uh, the flight crew training manual says that the flare maneuver is associated with about a 10 knot reduction in speed. So by the time you've closed the thrust levers, raised the nose and held it there, uh, you can expect about 10 knots of speed to have bled off uh, if you've done it all correctly. Uh, if you're seeing anything less than uh, V approach minus 10, then you've probably over flared and held the uh, aircraft off of the runway too long and therefore too much speed has bled off and chances are that uh, you'll just stop flying and you'll bury it. If you're much higher uh, than uh, than the, the approach then um, chances are again uh, you've probably uh, something's probably gone a little bit wrong in terms of your speed control on uh, final approach and uh, again your, uh, your landing distance calculations are gonna uh, take a bit of a hammering. And on the centre line, so uh, fairly self-explanatory. If you fly in the 2D cockpit, which uh, I do, it provides a nice consistent reference uh, for uh, everything, which is important uh, when you're landing. Uh, you'll see that the centre line tracks pretty much down the left-hand uh, side of the barrow ref uh, window. Now, this is an Airbus, uh, so we do need to talk a little bit technical and uh, look at the control laws. And as you probably know, uh, either consciously or subconsciously, we've got uh, three different laws, uh, main laws uh, that the uh, flight controls use in the A320. Uh, so we have normal law, which is what we fly around in 99% of the time, as long as nothing's gone wrong. And this is a lovely, uh, makes the aeroplane a lovely aeroplane to fly. You know, we just select our attitude, uh, let go of the side stick and the aeroplane does the rest for us. Uh, makes it really easy to fly, really stable pretty much point and shoot. Uh, we've also got alternate law, which we might have if uh, certain systems have failed. And uh, finally, uh, if it's really gone wrong, uh, direct law is essentially how a conventional aircraft behaves. So we deflect the uh, control, the uh, side stick and the controls move in proportion. There's no auto trim, so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, 
Um, normal law is what we're normally flying around in and uh, this is pretty good for most of our flying uh, in as I say it makes the aeroplane feel very stable uh, we just make need to make small smooth corrections on the side stick and the aircraft will hold whatever uh, attitude that we've put it in uh, so that's great but uh, it's not great in the flare unfortunately because we're pretty used to uh, on any aeroplane to arriving at the flare and having to maintain a constant back pressure on our side stick or on our control column uh, and if we were to keep normal law all the way through the flare uh, remember that in normal law the side stick uh, fore and aft deflection forward and backwards um, commands a pitch rate so if we were to arrive in the flare in normal law and we didn't do anything different uh, then if we were to hold a constant back pressure uh, we would be commanding a continuous pitch up and this would feel very un unnatural uh, in fact it, what you would have to do would be to just squeeze in a little squirt of back stick and then let go and uh, as i say wouldn't wouldn't feel very uh, right you wouldn't be able to get much of a feel for the flare itself and so airbus have uh, come up with a solution to that uh, which is called flare law so what is flare law uh, well it's a fudge basically uh, it's uh, a way of making the airplane feel conventional in the flare and the way it works is as you descend through 50 feet radio uh, the airplane memorizes your pitch attitude from that point uh, as you continue descending towards the runway when you descend through 30 feet radio uh, the airplane will take that pitch that it remembered at 50 feet radio and it will use that to uh, start reducing the pitch towards minus two degrees over a period of eight seconds so if you arrive at 50 feet radio and you are at uh, say six degrees nose up pitch uh, then the aeroplane will start whatever pitch attitude you have at 30 feet radio uh, the aeroplane will start reducing the pitch at one degree per second uh, conversely, if you were to arrive at 50 feet radio at two, at two degrees pitch, uh, then the uh, aircraft would start reducing the uh, pitch when you go through 30 feet radio at half a degree per second. So you can see how there's this interaction between the pitch attitude that you arrive at 50 feet radio and how quickly the nose or the aeroplane re uh, reduces the nose attitude as you go through 30 feet radio. And that will determine how uh how much you have to pull back on the side stick to counteract that so what does it mean uh, in practical terms that's the sort of technical side of it well in practical terms it means that you need to maintain the pitch with back pressure on the side stick during the flare so you're going to be holding the side stick uh aft of center during the flare and pretty much due, due, during most of the landing roll uh, as well certainly until you've got the uh, nose wheel onto the ground as well also means that it's very important in the airbus to have a stable pitch attitude and a stable rate of descent as you pass through 50 feet radio the big thing which airbus say you must not do is start chasing the glide path especially in a nose down uh, way when you're close to the runway uh, because the flare law will sort of take over and of course uh, give you a much greater pitch rate downwards and you'll bury it so as we come over th over the threshold as you'll see uh, the important thing is that we concentrate on having a nice stable pitch attitude and a nice stable rate of descent and that will make the aeroplane behave very predictably and very consistently 
little word about flap selection. Uh, you'll probably be aware that you can land the A320 in either Config Full or Config 3, and there are pros and cons to both. So Config Full tends to be associated with lower speeds uh, and therefore a shorter landing distance, also a lower pitch attitude. So if we were in low visibility procedures, uh, we wanted to be able to get the maximum visibility out over the uh, uh, flight deck, then uh, Config Full would be a good idea uh, better tail clearance when we land because of that lower pitch attitude um, the downside is that because flaps increase both lift and drag uh, we're going to be burning slightly more fuel whilst we're in config full config 3 uh, some people say it gives uh, better uh, sort of response and better handling in gusty conditions or crosswind conditions uh, does mean that we tend to fly slightly higher speeds and therefore we have a longer landing distance and so on but it does uh, because there's less drag uh, it is more economical burns less fuel uh, so it depends to a certain extent on the conditions and also on what your airline uh, policy is datums now uh, like any large aeroplane we tend to fly the a320 or any large jet by the numbers and if you're familiar with uh if you've done any uh light aircraft flying or anything like that you'll probably be familiar with this uh, saying power plus attitude equals performance and all we're saying is that uh, it, well it's the laws of physics basically if we set a certain power setting and a certain attitude that will give us a known performance and it will give us a repeatable performance uh, so the aeroplane will do whatever it is that we we thought we can do. We can fly the aeroplane purely with power and attitude. In fact, if we had, for example, an airspeed indicator failure or something like that, uh, we could fly the aeroplane absolutely safely just using pitch and power. And uh, there are tables in the QRH and so on and so forth that enable us to do that. So, uh, for example, you know, there is there will be a power setting and a pitch attitude for uh, level flight uh, in the clean configuration. There'll be a power setting and a pitch uh, that's associated with it for a, a descent and so on and so forth. Now, when it comes to landing, uh, we also have some power and uh, pitch settings, uh, which are a really good point to start from uh, in order to give us a nice, stable uh, approach. And on the IAE engined buses, uh, we can expect to see when we're all configured, so full flaps, uh, gear down, on final approach on a three degree glide path, uh, we'll have about 1.05 EPA and about 2.5 degrees pitch up. So with our aeroplane symbol exactly on the two and a half degree pitch line. And that will give us a three degree descent. Pretty consistent. In config three, the thrust will be a little bit low, about 1.03, and the pitch a little bit higher, around about on the five degree line. For the CFM engines, uh, there's a nice little rule of thumb, which is if you take your gross weight in tons and subtract three, uh, that gives you the N1 uh, datum, if you like. So, for example, if you had, if you're landing with a gross weight of 60 tons, take three off, that gives you 57. Uh, you can expect to have 57% N1. Now, it's a pretty good starting point. You know, you might need to tweak it up or down based on the conditions on the day. Uh, but if you start there, you'll be pretty stable to start with. You'll be in the good, in the ballpark. So let's talk a little bit about stable approach criteria then. And uh, by a thousand feet above the aerodrome, some airlines would use radio height. Uh, essentially, we want to be all set up. We want to be in our landing configuration uh, with the landing checklist complete, the engine spooled, on the glide path, on the localizer, everything ready to go. Uh, some airlines might let you uh, be slightly off speed as long as the uh, speed is back and your engines are spooled uh, by 500 feet. Now, in terms of the pitch, let's look at our artificial horizon here. 
and when we're on the approach the range of pitch uh, that you want to be using is pretty much that box that I've just drawn there so ideally no higher than uh, certainly no higher than seven and a half degrees and not really any lower than about level horizon if your pitch is going outside of those limits that is probably a pretty good indication that you are not uh, stable so We'll just have a look at uh, the picture at various heights. So here we are at 50 feet radio, a little smidgen low, but uh, perfectly acceptable. Uh, so we're on speed. You can see our pitch is just fractionally above our two and a half degree datum. Uh, we're on the center line. Everything is uh, set up. And this is where our uh, flare law is going to memorize our pitch there at three degrees nose up. 30 feet radio we're well over the threshold and this is the point at which the flare begins so this is where the uh, aircraft is going to start reducing the nose attitude down towards uh, minus two degrees over a period of eight seconds and we're going to start close uh, thinking about raising the nose and we'll shortly be closing the thrust levers at 20 feet radio we get the retard message to uh, remind us to close the thrust levers and uh, you can see the pitch change in the flare is about two to four degrees nose up judged visually how are we going to judge that we're going to look out towards the end of the runway uh, we're not going to look down at the artificial horizon and we're just going to raise the nose just a little bit more than is perceptible so it's a very small change in pitch you're only going to raise the nose just enough for it to be able to you know, to be able to tell that you've raised the nose around about 20 feet radio bring the thrust levers smartly back to the idle stop uh, you might want to vary that a little bit depending on the exact conditions on the day and that's something which you'll uh, be able to judge with experience and once you're in the flare uh, Airbus say you shouldn't be putting any forward uh, pressure on the side stick it's okay to relax the back pressure slightly if you need to uh, but no forward movements on the side stick Okay, so I've set us up on about an 11 mile final for runway 22 left at Copenhagen. You can see we're all fully configured. Our flaps are set to full, which is what we're going to be using for this landing. The landing gear is down. We've got our auto brake uh, low selected and uh, we'll be, uh, we've done all our landing checks. So everything's out of the way. We're nice and stable and uh, we're just flying level at 3000 feet. So I'll just let it run. And you can see we're just maybe a little bit to the left of the center line. And the trick here uh, is just small, smooth corrections, as we said. No more than about five degrees angle of bank. Wait for the airplane to respond and then make the correction as necessary. So we're flying along in level flight, uh, pretty much exactly 3000 feet, about 1.14 EPA is what you'll need to uh, maintain altitude uh, you know, uh, in this weight at uh, this weight it was about 60 tons so as our glide slope diamond just uh, comes down towards the center all I'm going to do is just nudge the side stick forward and I'm going to put our aeroplane symbol right on our two and a half degree uh, point in fact let me just pop out the displays there we go so I've put my airplane symbol there right on the two and a half degree line and notice how the uh, aircraft is set up now on a lovely three degree descent we can confirm that with our flight path vector and it's now just small smooth corrections so two and a half degrees of pitch about 1.05 EPA And again just small smooth corrections the other thing I've done is I've zoomed in the uh, navigation display to the uh, greatest possible uh, extent to uh, 10 miles and you can also see if I put my track line on the nav display right up the middle of the uh, runway that will also help aid in the tracking so and just small smooth corrections no more than about five degrees of bank once we're on final 
and again not really touching the pitch at all very stable at two and a half degrees so as you're aware as we talked about our normal law in the Airbus is absolutely perfect for this because we can it'll maintain the pitch pretty much or the flight path that with the pitch at uh, two and a half degrees and I'm just making small very small little inputs on the side stick just to keep us aligned with the localizer laterally however once we get to the flare the problem that we're going to have is that normal law is uh, not very well suited to the flare because uh, we're used as pilots to maintaining a back pressure during the flare and that's why uh, flare law comes in but we need to be mindful of that because if we have a rapidly changing pitch if we dive down to chase the glide path for example in the last stages of the approach um, then once uh, the flare mode starts uh, engaging uh, we'll actually end up with uh, quite a rapid nose down moment which uh, will end up with us burying it so what we're going to do is just make sure as I say, we're going to maintain our glide path so maybe just small smooth corrections again no more than about five degrees nose up uh, seven and a half absolute maximum no less than about level horizon you see there's a little bit of a mismatch between the um, pappy lights and the uh, glide path that's about right and just small smooth corrections just to uh, keep us on the center line so we just put ourselves maybe sort of there just above the two and a half degree line and then as we get back to the glide path just correcting to two and a half degrees just small corrections just as we sort of drift a little bit. 400. And as we come through 100, 100 feet, we're really going to start ignoring the glide slope all indicator pretty much altogether and just focus on maintaining 200. our two and Minimum. a half degrees. So there we go, so our pitch is at two and a half degrees, which is starting to indicate a little bit low. We just 100. want a nice stable rate of descent as we come through. Uh, 50, 50 feet. So there we go, 40, that's perfect. 30, 20, retard, Easing back. Retard. Thrust levers come to idle and just holding it there. And then we just ease the back pressure off just to fly the nose wheel down a little bit just to keep us straight. And that's plenty. There you go, there's uh, some hopefully useful uh, tips on how to land the uh, FS Labs Airbus in uh, prepared or in FSX. Hope you found it useful and uh, we'll uh, put together some more tutorials soon.